I'd like to address this actually to the mayor and to um, Mr. Kraft. Uh, did, um, I'll start with you, Madam Mayor, first. Uh, did you inform any members of council that you were meeting with Mr. Walker's staff and three citizens to discuss this bond issue? Ms. Carr, I've told you before that I will not be interrogated by you on this podium. If you would like to speak to me or ask me questions, you are free to call me in my office and ask me questions. I will not be interrogated by you on this podium. Madam Mayor, thank you. I'm sure that the public would like to know if you, and I don't hold private meetings so that the public doesn't know. They, I believe in the sunshine law, so uh, I, we'll just take that as a no answer. I'll just go ahead and ask these questions and you cannot answer. So, uh, so when you wrote your newsletter on January 4th, you wrote on Monday, January 5th, City Manager Walker has scheduled a study session for the City Council. At this meeting, Mr. Walker is going to present his analysis of some of the capital needs of University City. I expect that he will be making a recommendation on what we do. And later on in that commentary, you said, I look forward to hearing what he has to say. Since you attended all those meetings, weren't you aware of what he had to say with regard to the bond issue? I maintain that you probably were. Why would you represent yourself as being uninformed when you were intimately involved in this committee? And I find that troublesome. In 2012, uh, you, know, you uh, wrote that we needed to protect our reserves and you cried the use of $700,000 to $800,000 from our reserves for street repairs. That was in a year where we had a record surplus and spent record loads on maintenance under your administration. The following year, however, you were eager to use $4 million from our reserves for street repairs and touted the surplus budget and wise use of our reserves for that purpose right before the election. At that time, you mentioned $20 million was needed over 12 years to repair our streets and $1.2 million annually after that to maintain them. So repairing the streets doesn't do away with the maintenance. So um, again, um, I just uh, would like to know if you take ownership for being one of the architects of this bond issue. Um, apparently, you won't answer the question. Now, uh, I have some questions with Councilmember Kraft. He may uh, choose to answer or he may not. Since you were a participant in all the meetings, why didn't you state that at the council, to the council at the study session? I guess he prefers not to answer. Did you inform any members of council that you were participating in this committee? Well, I can state that he never informed me. And at the beginning of Mr. Kraft's campaign, he authored an article in Wars in which he wrote, University City has met the challenge. With savings from management reorganization, <coughs> University City has a budget that maintains city services and fixes streets that are long overdue for repair. There are no cuts in city services. Yet in your last statement to council and in your statement tonight, you said, that the streets are in poor condition. So what is it? Either we've met the challenge and fixed the streets, as you said during your campaign, or now that you've been elected, the streets are in poor condition. What do you really think? You can't have it both ways. Would you like to answer that? And then again, I ask, will he take ownership for being one of the architects? He was one of two council members that sat there and got input into what would be covered. I have a long list of things I think should be financed by a bond issue, but I didn't even know, didn't even know that we were considering one. And uh, I do have a question for Mr. Wilson. Um, Mr. Walker, may I? Uh, Mr. Wilson. I have a question. Okay. Have we taken an inventory of our streets since we spent around $5 million on street sidewalk walk projects over the last two years? Madam Mayor, we have. Is that published anywhere and uh, can we have a copy on that, please? If it's available, I'll provide it to all. Okay, and, uh, and the point I'm making here is that our streets could actually be in better condition than you are representing to the people. We're talking about streets in the aggregate.
We're talking about macroscopic rather than microscopic. I understand if your street has potholes. My question would be, why haven't those potholes been patched? There is no excuse for not patching a patch, a, a pothole. It does do damage to cars. It does trip. I live with potholes in my street. My street finally, the last section on Gannon, got plowed. But for years, I sat there with potholes, and they used to be patched, but no longer. So um, for those, uh, for those who say you're asking the public to dig into their pockets and finance projects, absolutely, this is democratic. And as you can tell, I am going to work as much against this as some of you are going to work for it. Um, and since you're asking them to dig into their pockets and finance these projects, which may or may not be maintenance, so that as Mr. Solidar, one of the members of this committee, stated at the last minute, these funds raised from a large increase in our city taxes would free up about $1.5 million currently used for street maintenance. Maintenance. Those were Mr. Solidar's words. We already have one of the highest taxes, property taxes, in this region. In the end, the lack of engagement of the entire council and the involvement of the public is an act of disrespect. You are not disrespecting me, but in fact, you are disrespecting the citizens who elected me to represent them. 